Welcome back to another Strong Fit podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking, so part two of my accident, and then just kind of the recovery, the road back, and... Don't remember where we stopped, but yeah. Yeah, we kind of stopped at, I think we were going a bit further, so it got into... I think you know what I want? No, no. Well, I want to start is when you start lifting again. Yeah. Okay, that's a gr- they need to hear, even if they heard it, they need to hear it again. Hear it again, yeah. Yeah. When, did, when do you start lifting again? Because you, okay, so you used five months... On the, on the hospital bed with fucking rods yeah. into your hip that you love showing me every single year. Good, yeah. Yeah. Um, so how much you weigh when you... So first day you stand up. Yeah, so the, well, the first attempt at standing up lasted a total of like 1.8 seconds. And then I was, yeah, <laughs> blood pressure <laughs> exactly. poof, fell right back down. And so then every day was just basically a... Let's see if I can do two more seconds and then five yeah. more seconds. And then it just built up until I could stand for two minutes. How long did that take? Uh, that was almost a week or two oh, weeks. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that it was long? Yeah, because it was like my, the first time I stood up, my dad was there. So he took my heart rate and my heart rate went to 190. Did you, did you just by standing up? Yeah, p- pretty close. <laughs> it, was, it was very dizzy. Um, but then, so at that point I was like, okay, so I have the okay oh, to yeah, stand yeah, up. Too, yeah. And so like I had uh, rubber bands and mm-hmm. I was doing all kinds of pull-ups, like one arm pull-ups and stuff on the bed and just trying to get stronger and that, making the heart rate yeah. go up yeah. so it can get stronger as well. And then it just, it took about a week for me to be able to stand up maybe two, three minutes, five you minutes. You don't have the rods anymore. No, they were still in, <laughs> but the, the bones were strong enough. <laughs> the doctor said to be able to stand up. <laughs> yeah. And so I've been out of my house in California now for five months and we were staying at my uncle's house at that time. And so the doctor, we, we got the okay, we got the ambulance, went in, got the rods taken out. Yeah. And the doctor said, when you can sit up and stand for like five, six hours, which will be the trip back home, then you can go back home. So the next day, the first thing I did is like, I'm going to sit and stand for five hours so I can go back home. Um, and so, you know, I was very stubborn on, I don't care the pain I'm in, I will be doing this. Uh, and then walking on crutches. And then... So how many... So oh fil- wait, I was sixty-seven and a half kilos. One hundred forty pounds. One hundred forty pounds. Yeah, one hundred forty pounds. I was very pounds. skinny. Yeah. So because yeah. you went in at two hundred and at, at two hundred and fifteen. Yeah. The same as yeah. I am now. Yeah. Yeah. Like two fifteen, two twenty-five. <laughs> um, so one hundred kilos. Yeah. And yeah, basically went down a lot in weight, and I had one jacked arm because this arm pounds. I was just constantly doing bicep curls, lot because I was so bored. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was. That was the whole, like once I got back to California, we went to go see physiotherapists and it was boring. So I was like, I'm yeah. going to do it my, myself yeah. um, and just started walking in the pool without crutches um, and then walking with crutches everywhere. And I was starting to do some what, pull-ups. What's that first experience like of walking by yourself without everybody fucking doing everything for you for five months? Yes. The, peeing by yourself? The peeing, like... Taking a shit by yourself. The peeing is not that bad because people can walk out, yeah. but like having to take a shit every single day and my mom and my brother having to wipe your butt because you can't wipe your own butt is, is rough. Like it's, it's humbling. I was about to say. This yeah. Is a, yeah. Um, and so it shows you that it doesn't matter. Like you can just, somebody may need to wipe your butt at some point in life, you know? <laughs> sooner or later. You expect yeah. later, but sometimes it's sooner. Or, yeah. yeah, you go in, you go, you come into this world with somebody wiping your ass, and I think you go out this world with somebody wiping your ass. And apparently in the middle as well. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. If you have an interesting life, someone will yeah. go in the middle. So I think like the first day that the doctor told me, like they took the rods off and I could go to the bathroom, I had to take a shit. Excuse my foul language. Um, That's not a fun language. And yeah, and, and I started, yeah. it took me seven minutes to walk from my bedroom to the bathroom, but going to the bathroom by myself was awesome. Yeah. And then the first shower was actually the best, where even now, you know, you get comfortable just mm-hmm. always taking a shower, yeah. or whatever you yeah, rush. And every once in a while, I'm, I like, I feel the water. I'm like, man, yeah. it just feels so good. It's so much better. Yeah. yeah. Like having like that wet wipe yeah. bath thing for five months is not that oh, great. Yeah. Right. Um, so the shower was probably better than going to the bathroom because it's not bad having yeah. somebody wipe your butt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At some point you get Does used it to do it. it well? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the shower part, I think people forget how nice, those small luxuries, yeah. the shower is really nice. And then I started walking with crutches for about a month and a half. And then my dad had his practice in Northern California. We went to go see 
his partner and they're like, yep, yeah, your hips are good. You could be, you can walk. And so the crutches went away and it's an amazing thing. And again, my severity of it is nothing compared to some of the Marines and stuff. I mean, it's, it's hard, but like the, the I've seen the X-ray. Yeah. It, it's you're standing there and they're like, yeah, take a step. And your body doesn't know how to yeah. react. And you're just you're like, cold, right? you're trying to fall yeah. forward. It, it, it was amazing. You know, it was like 20 minutes where we're just standing there and like, yeah, you can walk. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I would grab the crutch and I can walk yeah. and I take the crutch away and I can't walk. Yeah. And so like, I think that that's one of the biggest yeah. things I do now with seminars and like assessments. I'm like, don't give people crutches because you'll rely yeah. on them so yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was fascinating to me that I could grab one crutch. I can walk, take the crutch away. And my feet just would not move. Would not take a step. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the and falling so, forward was yeah. not happening. And you're yet. just like there. And so then we did one crutch and then like I had the crutch in front of me and then like I had to reach for the crutch and then like I got one step. And then once that happened, yeah. I was like a two year old kid that just learned to walk. And I was like, I'm <laughs> out. Yeah. Um, and so I got home and I told him I'm going for a walk. And I literally went to walk for about, two, three hours in the woods. Someone oh, was beautiful. sold the next day. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> yeah. that's, it was worth it. It was so worth it. And then I, I think I took that for granted. You know, I still take that for granted now, just walking yeah. places. Yeah. And so that's why I love living in Amsterdam because you get to walk everywhere. everywhere yeah. And so I was at home in, in California. You don't walk anywhere. It's, it's, that is very true. The stores across yeah. the street, you still drive you across still, the street. Yeah, exactly. And so I remember... People will never yeah, understand if you... I was with my ex girlfriend yeah. and I was like, I'm walking to the beach. And at the time I was staying at my uncle's and he was like 15 kilometers from the beach. She's like, it's really far. I was like, I don't care. I'm walking yeah. there. And I just yeah. started walking. I loved it so much. Um, yeah. After that, I was just kind of like, what do you, what do I do? Right. Yeah. So it did hurt to stand and walk that long. My hips were constantly in absolute pain. Uh, but like, do you mean like soreness or while you were walking? Or is it, was it like all a normal it. day? All of it. Yeah. It Soreness, was, walking, everything. Well, that's like when I went to see you for the first time and you're like, you know, that seven has turned into a four or a three because yeah. you just get so used to it. Yeah. So it was, you know, like, it, like. But it was there constantly. No matter what you do, it was just constantly. Yeah. yeah. It was like a constant seven. But like, here, like it would just radiate down to the knee. Um, it just felt like somebody was just constantly stabbing mm -hmm. you at the hip bone. Mm -hmm. Um and there was a point where, you know, getting up was like rolling to the side because the abs were still super weak and they were trying to get stronger. So I, I just kind of started going surfing again and body surfing and just swimming in the ocean. And was that, was that not scary to swim? Because you knew you get rolled. Yeah, I'd like to live life on the ocean. No, I know. I, but I, just, I didn't find it scary because I grew up surfing. Right. But I would think. Like, you know, the idea of being rolled in a wave, terrorizing if your abs are weak and, you know, your left hip. And, yeah, but I love, no. I love getting mangled by the waves. Okay. So that wasn't the scary, the scary part was the water was cold. Yeah. And so I would go out there and I'd be surfing or body surfing and my hip would just go. <laughs> and then my legs would stop working. And I was like basically doggy paddling, yeah. getting back in and trying to get sun to get movement in the hip again. Exposure therapy. <laughs> yeah. Large exposure yeah. therapy. Yeah. Um, and so the ulna never healed. So the, the, they did the ulna transplant and there was the, the, the plate that was on there. Um, and the funny thing was like this never healed, but I was like, it's not going to stop me. So I was doing pull-ups mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to start doing pull-ups because I wanted to get back to rock climbing. So there was a lot of grip going on, a lot of pulling going on. And the arm was super bowed out. Um, and I just remember one day I was like, well, if I use both legs, I can put more pressure on this one, but I can still do a deadlift. So the first time doing a deadlift, I think I pulled 60, 70 kilos. I was like, that felt good. And I went home and I was happy with it. I came back the next day and I, I like to do things day and day and day and day. And so I think it was like by the fourth or fifth day, I was back to pulling 140 kilos, like 350 mm -hmm. to 400 pounds. And just doing once singles and doubles. And I was like, this feels really good. And it, it made my hip feel good. Like as weird All as that models. sounds. All yeah. Models. Yep. And so for me, I was like, it's not hurting more. Yep. And it's not four. going yeah. necessarily less. But yeah, during but the lift. More. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and during the lift and like maybe 30 minutes afterwards, my hip would actually move a lot better. So I started doing a lot of weird things because at the time it was uh, for someone with a shattered hip probably yeah. I, I'd started so I, I started getting back into crossfit but at that time I started looking a lot at uh, Laird Hamilton and yes. that was when he was the big wave surfer and he was doing a lot of the bozu ball training mm -hmm. 
So I was doing a lot of stupid bozu ball shit where I would get on top of the bozu ball with the pec flies and so you're standing with the on it. Up hip, you stood on oh the yeah, shit. I was oh, doing. Yeah, no. yeah, I was. I would run and jump and try and balance on the bozu ball. I was doing a lot of Such things a bad idea. that you should not be doing yes. with the bozu ball. Yes. Uh, but that was. I think that that helped my hip out so much just because it was being forced to act and stabilize Instead? nonstop. Um, it's a bit on the aggressive side. But yeah, yes. a little bit. And yeah, so that, that was kind of the, the start of the recovery process. It was basically not listening to the physiotherapist or the doctors telling me that I had to be sitting down and laying down no, I, for months and months and months. Um, and I just started to go listening to my body. <laughs> so as we talked about in the last podcast, that, that cognition, that being yeah. present of how can somebody tell me my body is doing well if they don't know what I'm feeling. Yeah. And so that was basically most of my training is like I would push those limits to where my body was no longer feeling good. Hmm. And as Sounds I... Sounds like a very good constraint, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> if it feels good, I keep doing it until it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And so I remember I started to do CrossFit again, and it was the running that would kill me. Right. So that was my... Like, I think it was... That was like my switching point of, okay, how do I start to decompose movements so that I can start to run again? And where, like, if there's pain here, like, I wouldn't look at it as a, as a physio with insertions. And mm -hmm. I was just like, if I'm trying to do this movement pattern, right, the gait of running, what am I missing that's forcing me to have so much impact that's hurting my hip? And so I, I, I started doing, instead of running, I would start rowing and then I would do hammer curls. And I would put a band on my foot, like the short bands, mm -hmm. and I would do step ups and do knee raises with mm -hmm. unilaterally. Yep. Um, and within four or five weeks, I was able to run 800 meters, and then my hip would not totally yeah, blow. Yeah, now up. I would reveal your feet. And, and yeah, and, and I just kind of started doing things that way. Um, and that's kind of where I started to realize I wanted to become a coach because I was like, this is really cool. Like, I feel like it, it naturally came to me to push people and understand where people were because I've been at such a shitty mm -hmm. space where you can't do anything. Uh, right. You have to relearn the motor skills. Um, I like to push things to the extreme. I want to say fuck you to the entire medical world. Exactly. Um, you know, and I know that there's a part for them, but that was a big, a big turning point where I was like, all right, well, I'm going to become a, a coach, a CrossFit coach. And I'm going to see where, where this can kind of lead. But that, that there's a need yeah. for that approach too. Huge. And, and, and to, you know, knowing your own body and feeling it and all yeah. that stuff, how, matter, how much it matters. Yeah, and I have a video, and I'll try and find it for you guys, of me doing my first, I think it was my first 400 or 405 or, like 405 or 450 deadlift. And you see the arm, and it's just arched. Like, this was not connected. So again, sometimes we should be listening to the doctors. <laughs> um, and so that was the first surgery that I had to do again. So basically, once I started doing CrossFit, um, I was pushing very, very hard maybe not moving to the best of my abilities and learning things. Well, again, you learning how to past, not do things. You push past safety, let's put it this yeah. way, but yeah. Um, and so I went in for my surgeries back to back to back to back. You would have to have done some of them anyway, right? No matter what, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but it was, that was those, those were the moments where you, you start to go, okay, so like if we can, if my arm is hurting or my shoulder is hurting, and I would go see, I mean, I remember even when I was going to go see you, like I had the physiotherapist on call, the acupuncturist, the, I mean, I had everybody. Well, you were doing uh, was, multiple sessions a week, I remember. There was massage. Yeah, yeah. Acupuncture so doing, and physio, I remember. Yeah. yeah. And it, even then, everything kind of came back. Yeah. And so at some point, you're like, well, what the, like, at some point, you start asking yourself, like, is this ever going to stop, yeah. right? And so, like a lot of people that I work with is like, well, I'm like at a two or a three. Like I was, I, I was constantly at a two or a three. Like I used to always laugh because when I would walk in, Tatiana would be like, how are you feeling? And I was like, sore. I was like, this pinky is the only thing that doesn't yeah, hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, as, as, a, as a progression of skill and strength and structure started to evolve with my training, so did the small nagging injuries. Um, one of the first ones was I wanted, I wanted to start doing MMA because at the first CrossFit gym I worked at, it was a mixed martial arts place as well. And uh, I got slammed on the ground and one of the hips, one oh. of the pins popped out of my hip. Yeah. <laughs> so I could move the screw all the way up to my belly button. It would, I, it would slide around. So that was the first one that 
really hurt. So I w- when I got that one taken, I was like a full blown C section again. Um, and it was uh, they didn't knock me out completely, so it was uh, local. And so I was kind of awake, and I remember they were showing me the stuff, the, the doctor, and I was like, there's supposed to be five. And he's like, no, we only have four. And I was like, no, there's a fifth screw. And that fifth one was the one that popped out, and it was actually hiding behind the pubis. So they had to go all the oh, way ah. digging to pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And that one was a harder recovery. That one took oh. a little bit of time. You touched the low abs, you're so far. Yeah, and that one, and so kudos to all the women that have C-sections, because, yeah. man, that one... You think you can bounce back, and no. it was just horrible. I saw Yaya. Yeah, yeah. um, no, Yaya yeah, yeah, was born C-section. Yeah. Tatiana was very athletic, six-pack. Just man, like yeah. you know, doing the wheel and shit took yeah. her two years to be able to yeah. do it, and sometimes she still had pain. Yeah, that was a long recovery. That one, that one was rough, and, yeah. and the rough part is, again, where we should listen to doctors. Uh, sometimes, you know, they said eight weeks, don't do anything, very minimal, and of course. So I'm sitting in a chair and I'm coaching. And at this time I had my gym. I had started my gym and I'm sitting down as I'm coaching and everything. And I have to stand up. And so one day I was so bored and it was nice and sunny outside. And I took the chair outside. I was like, well, I'm tired. I'm going to sit down. Well, I don't want to sit down. I want to stand up. And so basically my workout was 150, sit to the chair and stand back up. Um, and I, then there was no, there was soreness in the legs, but the abs felt fine. So I was like, well, I'm going to start doing more stuff. And I think I was doing kettlebell swings where I went whoop and I went too hard. Yeah. Went, and so then I got a hernia. <laughs> so I should have waited the two months. But the hernia, yeah, yeah, but I got the hernia too. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes they're there. Like mine was there for 15 years. I just didn't Nothing, know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I still have some. And the yeah. form well, the guy told me it's sooner or later the left will do it too. Yeah. So those are things. Yeah. Uh, the hernia is like, yeah. It's, as things happen, things happen, you know? But By the way, not the best recovery area. No. It takes a while. There's, I, there's not that much blood flow down there. Yeah, I, it's weird. Apparently. But yeah, like me, they inflated my stomach to go in. So yeah. they tore my abs from inside. Okay. Ouch. Uh, yeah. Like I, three weeks constant cramp. Like it took forever to heal. Like yeah. I couldn't do the wheel for fucking four, three months. Yeah. It's a, it's a horrible. Yeah. Yeah. That, that hurts. That and the foot, I think, are one of the worst places to have mm. things happen. Yeah. It, it heals slowly. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, so that was, I mean, that was the first surgery. Did yeah. they cut the abs, though? Yeah. Because that's, that's longer. Than me, well, torn their recovery, you was cut. That's yeah, they a cut lot all, longer. Yeah, they had to cut all the way through to the pubis. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah so like that, was, real, that was the second one, yeah. Like the long C-section. Like long C-section, C-section. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was a full-blown full blow Yeah, that one is... All the layers had to be cut. I like when they make it C-section, like, yeah, no. Yeah. So like that that, that's was, a major, yeah. Yeah, and then the next one was this but, one. Okay, because you don't have the ab on the left. Right, because I popped it doing a kettlebell swing because I was stupid. Oh, so when they did so C-section, they never came back from that, basically. No, so they did. So I was fine, except that screw was out and it was starting yeah. to hurt because it was getting yeah. stuck. In between, mm-hmm. I don't know where it was getting stuck, but it was well, getting it's stuck. It's metal. Yeah, it's not supposed, <laughs> not supposed to be, to be there. there. Let's put it this way. So they went down C-section, took it out. They couldn't do it without cutting everything. Well, no, maybe not. I don't well, know, because the, the screws were all the way through. Like, the screws oh, were... were yeah, so, the pubis was broken like this. Right. And then they so, they it pulled back. it down, and they had the screws like that holding right. it together. And then, they reattached, and then one they popped out, but then it got stuck behind. So, then they had to take them out and then go in behind and pull that one out. Jesus yeah. Um, so, that was the recovery. Anyway. And then... Yeah. yeah. So, then basically, once that happened, then I, it was the kettlebell swing where I was like, it felt very not good. <laughs> there's another way it just felt something wrong. i did something wrong yeah um and that's where the the left one popped up and so I, you can still feel there's there's just no muscle there yeah. from basically the pubic bone yeah so you tore the ab yeah, yeah to yeah. right right below my belly button it's all torn <laughs> which that was when i used to do ghds and people would make fun of me because it wasn't a good rep uh, I'm like, sure you were slightly to the hurts. side yeah yeah, yeah exactly like, yeah. like when i start to do kettlebell swings when i start to do uh running mountain climbers thing like the harness if if i haven't i need to be super slow at building it up because if not it just that one yeah. i had to relearn to run on that one again because now if i run the psoas starts to disconnect so quickly because there's yeah. nothing supporting yeah. it yeah and so my leg after a mile or it two does. it'll start to turn yeah, out and then it just yeah. starts to yeah. everything will go numb and i run yeah. like an amputee basically after well, so it, leg takes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it takes forever to rebuild that one uh, plus after that usually you're sore for a while 
when the left side that starts sucks. to when you go too much extra torque yeah. on the left I'm out because I remember when you fucked up your back we're in Spain yeah. and Kike misloaded the, the stuff yeah. like ooh that one, that one took, took a, while. a while yeah like I could tell you were in pain on that one there's nothing worse than when you have the spasms He's yeah, like, yeah you I remember can't touch your knees. <laughs> yeah, like when when your left side would go, then you'd yeah. be you'd be fucked for a few days. Yeah, yeah. So those are always things that you have to try and build build out as you go. <laughs> or not. Yeah, keep constant maintenance is always yeah. the smartest thing to that do. That you have you'll have to work on the structure yeah. forever. Anyway, so uh, then eventually you build back to a decent. Build back to being strong again. Yeah. Uh, started to. I really enjoyed CrossFit. So my, my, my approach was an obsessive one. Uh, seven days a week, no rest yeah. days. Uh, show up to the gym every morning. And it's like, how do I feel like killing myself today? Yeah, exactly. Um, and that was it's really, so, yeah, yeah, like I, I, I'll have to look for them. I have a few different, I can't believe I used to do that much work. <laughs> I'll, I'll look for them and, and we can post them so you guys can take a look at them. But I was looking at one of my sessions and like I would show up in the morning, I would coach classes. I would do my first training session. One of my first training sessions for me in the morning, it was always doing either uh, EMOMs, uh, mm -hmm. heavy EMOMs, or kind of like the Invictus, Invictus style, like every stuff, eight yeah, minutes, exactly, like yeah. interval type training. And so like one of them would be like EMOMs, I would do 40 minutes. Every odd minute, you do power clean and jerks at 120 kilos for three reps and four deficit handstand push-ups. And on even minutes, you do five muscle ups and That's ten burpees. That's a typical uh, Invictus. Very Invictus, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was just heavy. And then that would be my first workout. Then I'd go have a massive omelet at my uncle's restaurant at RJ's Cafe, and then go take a nap, wake up, go back, and then I do rowing intervals. So then I go do eight by one thousand meter rows or ten by one thousand meter rows, and then I would coach classes again. And then nighttime would be gymnastics and skills. So it'd be like put on a 90 minute clock and just set a bar at 185 pounds, so 80 kilos, mm -hmm. and just work on squat cleans, hang squat cleans, push jerks, or I would do like presses to push presses to push jerks, and then once you got locked out and you were tired on the shoulders, I would do narrow grip overhead squats mm -hmm. as skill work. And, you're and just, gymnastics. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just a, a lot of work. Yep. Um, or like I would work out in the morning and then go see you and work out and do the, mm -hmm. the burn the questions and then come back at night and do rowing intervals. Um, but that was basically until I would have full burnouts. So you could tell that performance was there as far as the ability to complete tasks. Mm -hmm. Health was not there. And I mean, I would call you every two weeks, be like, dude, I'm yeah. not feeling good. I'm feeling sick. Yeah. And so you, the deterioration in, in health in that aspect, looking back on it, I'm like, I was absolutely not healthy. No, because, well, that's why you came to me, too, because you yeah. knew that. I remember, like, you came to me, it was like, look, I can't go. There's a, a point past which I cannot go. Yeah. But I think, really, what you were saying is, like, that I'm just heading for the wall. Yeah. And this has to change, you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. that was, um, after I, so, okay, so we talked about that one. Then, so the this bone didn't fuse. That was the first one. Yep. So they cleaned it all back out. They put a new bone in there. They put a thicker titanium bar. Mm. And it, the bone fused, which was good. Um, metal doesn't bend like yeah. the bone. <laughs> Turns out, yeah. the bone so does. But I yeah. was doing a powerlifting competition, and that was the that was going to be going into the third surgery because then this was healed up. But then what happened is on the powerlifting competition, I didn't warm up enough and I didn't eat food, and so I went at I did my starting weight was supposed to be my PR weight. And I was like, I fucking got this because I had no powerlifting coach. I was like, just yeah. go do it. Uh, felt good during the warm up. I went to go bench. They kept me at the bottom for longer than I thought should have been stayed at the right. bottom. And as I started to press, I started to crank. Well, the metal doesn't bend. So right. there was so much torque that it ripped. I just heard a, and it, it, I thought the bone popped. So I, I, it, I failed. And at that time, I remember this so clearly because I was single and there was a corral. And so I had invited a few women to come cheer me on. So I was pissed that I failed. And I was like, there's no way I'm failing again. So I should have stopped. Like if, if you, I don't know if there's videos, but yeah, so you started what, what to happened? see. It's, yeah. it's not the bone that popped. Well, I thought it was the bone that popped. And so but. I started to see this thing getting inflamed. So I walked outside and my, my old business partner and, and Garrett, who I started the gym with, he's like, hey, are you all right? And I was like, I'm going to go again. He goes, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I have it. 
And I did the second one eccentric. And then as soon as I got back here, just, just full collapse. And so then I walked outside and I was pissed. And this thing was, it just looked just purple. Yeah, so <laughs> what, what, what had happened? Uh, all the muscle completely tore off the bone. Yeah, no, yeah. I know, but they don't. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> the bone actually wasn't the bone. It wasn't the bone. It's it the, was muscle the muscle that just got just detached. Just totally yeah. detached, yeah. So I wrapped it up like crazy. Um, I told my dad, hey, I think the bone popped again, like the bone broke. And he said, all right, well, I'll buy tickets right now. We'll go to Mexico and we'll have surgery on it because the U.S. is not very kind on surgeries, surgeries on medical on insurance. In general. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's not so kind on the wallet. And yep. my dad has a very good friend that's one of the top surgeons in Mexico. So we flew down there to go see him um, the next day. And so before my flight, I was so pissed that I missed the lift. So that morning I have video of it on Instagram. We'll post that one up as well. Um, I have video. I basically took a knee wrap and I wrapped from here to here as hard and as tight as I could. And I did reps of five with it mm. and then racked it back in. And I said, all right, let's go get surgery. Now we can go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so went down. Turns out you don't need your forearm. Yeah. yeah. You just, if you wrap it. Yeah, exactly. If, if you t wrap it tight enough, the tendons will squeeze the bar. And yeah. you, you barely don't need that much anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and so got to Mexico, went straight to surgery. And as they were opening it up, um, that was the worst one because it was going to be the third one. So it's the third nerve block going into mm. the arm. And so I remember the guy like putting in the needles and I fucking hate needles, but he put in the first needle for the nerve block and you just feel like a rubber band just snapped you. And he's like, move your arm and you, you the arm doesn't move. Mm, like it's just, good. it's creepy. Yeah. I was about to say that. So, yeah. Show. So like, you're going to be awake through the whole surgery, but we're going to uh, keep you happy it. over here. So I'm, I'm happy through the <laughs> yeah, whole thing. Sure. Um, and I could watch them and they're just like slicing You would have open. to provide very, valid entertainment for me to be happy <laughs> doing that shit but yeah. we're having some good conversations i don't remember them too well but it was it was interesting um but yeah so that one was a very aggressive surgery so they had to clean everything up yes. they took the hardware out but they had to drill new holes in to re -sew. i don't know how the whole process is but it was i wouldn't want to know very, either. Yeah, yeah it was very aggressive on the arm to say the least um and i had a drainage thing and my arm started to swell in the middle of the night so it was super painful so then they had to go in again and clean the bacteria started to form in there so i had to clean it back up and that one took me another four to six months to recover because mm, it was big one, yeah. yeah i mean uh, and i have pictures of that one as well just i think it was like 47 staples mm. so i pulled those out right because you have to reattach the muscle yeah. like super or small and yeah. yeah so it was stitches from the inside out and that one was, I think, one of the more humbling of surgeries because it was, it was the last one I did and it took so long to recover. The other ones I recovered quickly, like I was able to start moving. And this one, the arm was just in so much pain and because of the nerve block, um, even to this day. So basically all the ulnar nerve, all of this is constant pins and needles. Mm -hmm. Again, the body gets used to it and it's like it's not going anywhere. So it's become Very the new center. Fair. So unless I focus, like if I go like this now, I, it feels like pins and needles, like when you sit in the toilet too long, your leg yeah. goes numb. It was basically like that, like painful like that for six months before the body. Like got the used same to feeling like, like, ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like when you sit down yeah. and like your foot, yeah, it, just 24 seven, it never oh. goes away. Oh. Yeah. So feeling just never goes away. And so, As you move or just constantly? Constantly. So yeah. like your foot starts to fall asleep like right yeah. now and yeah. you touch it and you feel like the, zzz, yeah. that's how it feels 24 yeah. seven for six months. So any yeah. movement is hypersensitive. Yeah. If there's a little bit of heat, it's burning. If it's a little bit of cold, it's super yeah. cold. Going like this is painful. painful. Yeah. Like just even to the touch, it's yeah. painful. And of course, that's when you start to run into everything. <laughs> <laughs> then With you realize how much stuff there is to, yeah, exactly, yeah. And so after six months, like I started to get used to the numbness. So at least then the numbness was yeah. part of normal life. Um, but then after six months, I started to get back into training and it was, I mean, you start from scratch, right? Yeah. Jumping pull-ups again. Um, you know, because you have no grip. No yeah. More. So yeah. the, the cool thing was, is that it showed the clients that I had at the time, like at least on my, from my perspective, it showed that, listen, even though I'm going through this, you can still do jumping pull-ups yep. and you still get a good workout. You can still get a good stimulus. You can still push hard. And so that was, you can do something. Yeah. That was the buildup. Um, and then I think it was a year and a half after that where I was like, Hey, there's no more surgeries. The back is feeling good. 
my deadlift started to creep up towards 600. Um, you know, bench was strong. I was hitting close to 400 when I came to see you. Like it was, oh, at least, yeah. it was getting there. Yeah. Um, you know, clean and jerk was at 380, 385. Mm -hmm. Like or it was at 360 because I hit 385 for two when we went for the grid. Um, everything was perfect. My fran my heavy fran time was sub 230, and I could go and back squat 500 for three right afterwards. Yeah. Like it was. There was no reason except for the 5K, the 10K, except for the endurance shit. <laughs> there was no reasons that I should not be going in my head to regionals yeah. and, and being that type of athlete. Um, so I was at a point where I was like, well, fuck, let's, like, let's go do this thing. And again, the only stopping points that I really had was every six weeks, my back would blow up. Yeah. Every day was about 45 minutes to get out of bed. So my alarm would go off at... I remember my alarm would go off right at 5.02 so that by 5.42 I could be out the door. Mm -hmm. And so it was made, most of that time was literally trying to roll out of bed yeah. if it wasn't spasming too bad. Um, my shoulder would start to go out, especially the left one would, yeah. would start to just blow that. up yeah. no matter what they did. So the physiotherapy, the ART, the acupuncture were release of discomfort mm -hmm. for sure. But as soon as I'd go back to pressing, it'd go Yeah, right but that was, that was a one-day stop because yeah. I remember like within the session, it's like, yep, yeah. back at it. The chiropractor would help momentarily. And then all the answers I ended up getting is, well, you should stop. <laughs> you know? Well, they were saying is accept that your life has changed. Yeah. yeah. Quit and uh, become average. Yeah, you have upper trap dominance. Potential labrum tear, tear. So we would went, we would I went for the MRI. No labrum tear. No bone spurs. The structurally yeah, there was hurt. nothing yeah. wrong at the joint. Yeah. So they couldn't figure out how to make it better. Mm. So that was where everything had just reached this kind of stalling point, where performance would go to this to this pinnacle point, and then I could and never push inch back. Past it. Yeah, because yeah. it would just really send me right a, yeah. back. That's what I remember. And so that's when I was like, well, maybe it's me it's my mm -hmm. performance so i need a coach and um i'd found you on instagram and on instagram on facebook and i kind of started looking at what you were doing and i started getting into wanting to do more strongman stuff um and i started to see that you were uh, training val at the time and i reached out to cj because i was like well he's one of the mm -hmm. best out there like for me when i was looking for coaches if i want to be a crossfit games athlete at that time i think invictus and still even now, like if you look at statistics, Invictus dominates they the had, field. Like people don't understand. They like dominate. I remember the year I was there with uh, CJ, you know, before the, the, we went on the on seminars because I was with Val. Yeah. Val was uh, last year performing. Uh, we were joking with CJ because out of the top 10 men, not even women, because yeah. him is women and team, but even the top 10 men, eight came from his system. Yeah. Out of the 10, it was crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So statistically speaking, if oh, you're going to be looking for having the most chance and the yeah. biggest pool to And if make there's it. a programming that is proven yeah. to work, right. it was CJ. I mean, two teams at the games every year, individuals yeah. 11 years year. in a row, yeah, exactly. You know, so it, it's, it's, it was impressive. So I reached out to them and they wrote back and it was above my pay grade <laughs> to get their personal training. And then I, I started to see, and again, shout out to CJ and Invictus because the, the programming is magnificent. Mm -hmm. what the the way they do it but i was like it, it it doesn't help it's not individualized to how what i need as far as understanding that my body works differently no but why the real question was you could strict press 220 yeah. for five reps 225 don't not off your chest yeah uh you could deadlift to 500 for da da da, da but not 10 pounds past it something yeah. on the squat those were the stuff you you didn't need to do more work right or even like you were uh so strong when yeah. i met you too strong for strong fit on for course fit honestly but that wasn't what what you needed yeah it's it like was, why can't i press to 25 right. because i remember that's one of the first things you told me yeah and that was yeah and it was like one of those things where it's like you start to look around at the coaching pool that there is when you know myself being a coach and you're like what the fuck are we doing yeah. You know, and that was a question I always had with me in, in, in my gym. It's like, what am I doing this for? Like, none of these people want to go to the games. None of these people really care. Maybe they, they don't wanted care. to. Yeah, they don't care. But, yeah. but how come there's such an obsession with 
this pedestal of the games or competition and the volume of training yeah, yeah. and the methodology the science method like yeah. for me it never clicked why the reps and sets geared the results like that was yeah. one of the things i just i i never understood because i never followed any of that yeah. shit and i was stronger than yes. 95 if not 99 percent of those people that followed that shit religiously yeah. So I'm like, there's something wrong here. Yeah. Like there was, for me, it was such a missing puzzle piece that all the coaches that I searched for just wanted to give me these science proven methods. Pe that... People don't understand because they, they don't know you from then because back then no one knew you. But yeah. you were, uh, if we look at CrossFit regional level, so if we took anybody regionals up, you were top, I guess, three yeah. strongest CrossFitter in the world. I mean. Right. Yeah, I always said if I can make it past the fucking open, because it was all cardio yeah. bunny shit. So the, like that was the thing is I could do Fran at 227. I could do heavy Fran at 227. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, it yeah. wasn't, it's just, I had a, I have length, but I could move heavier shit better than anybody. No, but plus know, at some and, point and so, you did the 385 power clean and, uh, yeah. and push press. I know because you did it in my gym. <laughs> yeah. So I've witnessed that one. And you did what to me is still the most impressive athletic performance by someone who weighs 225, which is cleaning a 300 pound sandbag. Yeah. <laughs> like this, like, oh, you missed it by that much. I know you did yeah. a 265, I remember that. Clean yeah. it easily, then pressed it. And then you took the 300, and if you missed it, it's, you got it here, you just couldn't get under it or some shit like that. Right. Or you might even have done it, I can't remember. But that yeah. was the single most impressive. I hit the impressive. 300, the 335, I cleaned, but I couldn't get overhead. No, the 300, I don't know that you pressed it, but I know you clean it. I 265, yeah. I remember you taking it yeah. and pressing it. I was like, fuck. Yeah. And I remember you taking the 300 and cleaning it or anyway. Yeah. That was the single most impressive feat of strength at 225 <laughs> that I've to this day seen. Yeah. People don't understand what cleaning a 300 pound sandbag means. It's a lot of work. That is yeah. insane. So you were right up there. Yeah. But when I, yeah, when I came to see you, you could not strict press 225. Right. So we start to go through the the assessment the and everything. Process, and yeah. me, this stuff where I was like, how did you guys, well, that's the thing is no one tests for that, but you couldn't press off of your left arm. Remember right. when we, we started to do the monster dumbbell yeah. and we had a hundred pound, the lightest we had was the hundred pound uh, monster dumbbell and yeah. um, you know, 120, 140 on, on the right arm. He could not put the 100 on his shoulder. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I remember the look on your face when we started yeah, doing that. I was so like, pissed. <laughs> So, because that's when I, I beat him, I beat him on that one every time, and yeah. so oh, the look on his face was priceless. That one was horrible. Yeah, but you could not. That, the problem is not pressing; is you could not handle the weight on right. the left. And I was like, well, that's where this starts. Yeah, like your structure was so imbalanced. Yeah, so imbalanced. It was crazy. So it was. Yeah. So I mean, it was. It was a awesome getting to find you and you know having you close. And I know that. In Holland, this might seem far, or anywhere yeah, else in the world. Exactly. But I would drive an hour and a half to see you. Yeah. Uh, that's if there was no traffic. Yes. Um, you know, once a week, twice a week, and it was it was that right. So that was for me. That was the next, the next step. And this is something that I got from my accident. And I had a really cool email that came in um, from a guy that just went through a really gnarly accident. He's like, so, how did you deal with it in bed? And you know, what was that recovery process like? Because he's suffering from, you know, being depressive and anxious, being in bed. So the best thing I can say is if you can move something, move it and try and get blood flow. That was something. And, and find, and for me, it was getting a routine. So every morning I would wake up, have breakfast. I'd watch Ellen DeGeneres. Like there was that routine where the day to day, there was structure to it. So it's not like just fuck. Yeah. But one of the biggest things is understanding that it's, it's almost like a waiting game and a leveling game, you know? And so you know, Dragon Ball Z and, yeah. and video games, like you build up these levels. And for me, when I got to go to see you, it was like a next level up. Cause I was like, okay, so I've been able to get to this point by myself, but it's yeah. like when you play that Mario level or whatever, yeah. and you just die at the same point. But then there's that black swan moment. You're like, huh, this is the next step. And now there's excitement. There's like that anxiety, excitement, that assurance that it's yeah. this is the right way forward and whenever i'd go see physiotherapists chiropractors like it would feel good but i'm like this isn't gonna do shit in the long run <laughs> i know i know a week later on back you know here. And, yeah. and and i was i've been at that point where you're just constantly looking for a fucking fix mm. 
Like, just somebody tell me, I'm willing to sacrifice. Like, I'll if you tell anything, me, go yeah. eat the donkey shit and it's going to fucking heal you, I would go eat the donkey shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's at that level. Except for don't make me count macros. Everything yeah, except for yeah, exactly. counting macros, I'm good. I'm sure there's macros in donkey shit. I just don't want to know about them, but yeah. But it was at that point where, like, when I came to see you, there was this assurance that it was the right thing. A, because you gave me things that weren't working correctly. Mm -hmm. But you're... I don't even know how to put it in words. Like it wasn't a, this is going to heal you. It's, this is what's happening that's wrong with you. And yeah. the way to get better is if we can make this start to work. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, I can latch onto that. And the fact that it wasn't a, you know, and I, I'm seeing this more and more, and we always fight about this, like not fight, but, you know, get upset about it, that there, it wasn't this simplistic yeah. fix. It wasn't a, Let's test and retest to show you that what I'm doing is working. Yeah. Which is what everybody else had been doing. But that's you know? just gaming because I can make you test and retest on the stuff you're good it's at. So and you're always gonna do, it's so easy. Yeah. You're always going to do better. Yeah. And, and you can take away the, the stress or the discomfort like that. But then as soon as you add load or stress back into it, it's going to come right, right back. All I got to do is heal. I take the stressor. I test you. And then, I, and, but then the second I put it back, we're good. Yeah. And For so, me, the only thing that matters to me was your C game. Yeah. Like, oh, what is it that you cannot do that really wrecks you? That we, because that's what's holding you back. So right. for me, it was just that. It's what's holding you back. Yeah. Not the easiest thing to see and even less easy to go at, though. Yeah. Because then suddenly you have to press with just a left arm. Right, yeah. And that's not fun. And that was, yeah. At first, it was <laughs> not fun. But remember, like, when you yeah. could strict press the 100, you were like, all right. Yeah, that yeah, was... Yeah, we're going somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Same thing with the harness. And then remember how many times your left side was like, oh, yeah, right away. I don't like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that that was the cool shit is, you know, it, all coaches I'd gone to see at that point were just going, you're doing these things at an extreme level. You're going to get hurt. And you were the first one like, no, yeah. you should be able to do these yeah. things. Um, well, because the your strength potential. is there. Yeah. yeah. I saw your potential. Right and away. so... I think that was kind of the, the coolest moment is us sitting down upstairs for 45 minutes. And I was like trying to roll all the pains and aches away. <laughs> By the way, at that time, you forgot to mention he had that little accident on the, on the mountain. It's like any yeah. accident, Sir Joey, I should know about. He was like, no, nah, I'm good. I can do everything. Yeah. Well, because at that time, I'm thinking I can perform all these yeah. exercises. I can move the load. You know, I'm you know, no, whatever. but like three sessions in, I see a scar on his form. But like, you forgot to mention that scar. Yeah. And he's like, yes, coach, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> then we go into an hour and a half conversation. I'm like, you don't think that mattered to tell me that the first time, you motherfucker? He was like, well, I could do it. That's not what I asked. That is yeah. not what I asked. Yeah. yeah. So that was, I mean, that was a cool, that was when I knew, again, back to that assurance, that yeah. black swan moment. Nobody ever bothered to ask that shit. Yeah. Right. Um, that was also when you told me I need all these numbers. And as soon as I went to go do the 5K, I was like, nah, I don't want to do CrossFit. How about we stick to grid and powerlifting? There, there was, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I told him, like, I want Helen. I want, like, just the nasty girls. By yeah. the way. Because now we were, by the way, so at the time, you tell me you want to make to the CrossFit Games. Yeah. And I'm like, I've seen your numbers. Why? Yeah. Like, we can, you were born for grid, first of all. Yeah. And I wish that, that sport would have taken off. Grid, they would you would have correctly. murdered grid. Uh, you were born for grid. Yeah. Um, people understand, like at, at my gym, you know, 385, off we go, uh, power clean, not kilos, obviously, pounds, like, yeah. fellas. But um, uh, you were giving me numbers. I was like, first of all, you can be a pro in strongman yeah. at 105 kilos whenever you want. Um, powerlifting, we can go far. It's just like, you keep talking CrossFit. I'm like, all right, so let's talk realistically. How are you doing on, can you do 25 rounds of Cindy? Right. For the ones who don't know, that means uh, five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 squats, 20 minute I'm rap. Right. And if you can't do 25 rounds, you're not even right. original. Yeah. Um, Those like, were good. Like all that stuff I could do. It Helen was, was okay. The running and the swimming. Yeah. Well, the swimming we didn't need, but the problem was yeah. the running. Every time we started, even Helen, it's just because you're fucking hurt yeah. so bad. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it good. was just, yeah, there, there were limits. But me, what I saw mostly was the structure, like how strong you were, but that the structure was never worked on. And I don't mean squatting. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you were doing everything for performance. I was like, yeah, but considering where you come from, we have to make sure that you don't break, which sounds simplistic when I say it like that, but right. none, Nobody. no one looks at that first. Like, how about you don't break mentally, physically, or mentally, by the way. Right. By the way. Yeah. That too. And yet, the base of the pyramid, I was like, that's what you like. That's yeah. it. Right. So let's go through the assessment process. I don't know if you yeah. remember it. I yeah, remember I the exercises. Yeah. So we did, when we started, we had, we had that conversation. We came down. We did the Y, is it YWTLs? Yeah. YWTLs. We are having a conversation mm -hmm. about that yesterday. Um, and that one, I've never felt like such a wimp in my life. Yeah, it was like two and a half pound weight. Two and a half right? pounds, so one and a quarter kilos. And I was almost crying and sweating yeah. and slipping everywhere. Like, if you want to talk about a sympathetic response. Yeah. Well, that, that, left, that left arm was not happy. No. And I was like... What's that? Yeah. yeah. So that's weird. Yeah. yeah. That was horrible. Because you were trying not to show it, but your left arm was acting on his own. So yeah. I was like, ooh. Yeah. What that's why that? I feel my it's eye like, has gotten yeah. so better because I'm very good at getting away with things yeah, and wanting exactly. to game the yeah. system. But I was like, <laughs> what's that right there? It's not doing the right thing. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you can't yeah. lie about that one. Yeah. Yeah, that one was miserable. Uh, so it was YWTLs. Then we went uh, C presses. Mm -hmm. We were sitting down, legs straight, trying to see, see unilateral pressing. Um, did we do that, something else? Did we go into the... Cir no, then we did sumo deadlifts yeah, because Sam was there. Yeah. And so we did the sumo deadlifts and we were doing the, the pause at the bottom. So we uh, were holding the tension. Right. And it's for people, it's, uh, I still love that exercise. Because yeah. um, he was pulling, but there was a, he was disengaging at the bottom of the pool every time, which... At the time, I don't know that his hip is so fucked up, but that makes sense, right? Because he's trying to go to his back and everything. I was like, all right, let, I want to see if your um, glutes and hammies are working and both sides. So you're doing it sumo. So the idea is that um, the weight are touching the ground, but 60% of the weight is in your hands. Yeah. You're holding most of it and you just let the weight rest on the ground, but still with most of the weight. So the, the bar will never unbend. Most right. of the tension is in the bar. And then one, so lazy uh, French lazy seconds, French, lazy yeah. seconds. One, two, three, pull, and without ever disengaging. Yeah. And right, and then the left side starts to show again. Yeah. And I right was right. like, oh, because from what you were telling me, it sounded like a structure. Stuff. Yeah. I was like, oh, let's go test it. Which is, I would usually was testing the structure first anyway. Yeah. And so then after that, we went outside. And we yeah. did rope pulls. Yeah. Do we do rope pulls first or overhead carry first? No, fully rope, pull. rope pulls. Rope pulls. First, rope pulls yeah. first. Yeah. And so we did the rope pulls. And all I remember is doing that thing and you're like, faster. I was like, I'm going as fast as I fucking can. Yeah. You're like, faster. And I was like, yeah. fuck you, you I'm going to yeah, show you fast. Yeah, exactly. I just started pulling and I just remember seeing white and my whole face just like all blood left well, my Imagine, head. okay, knowing what you know now, yeah. imagine what your left bicep had to with, say. Yeah. Because uh, for, for example, with Rich, I always know when um, he has an issue with the left side is his left biceps atrophies. Yeah fast if he doesn't keep active on it so, someday he wakes up and he's it's half the size is gone and i'm like ah left side yeah yeah so that was it was rope pulls so rope pull on the left bicep and at that time it wasn't just mean. you guys are all we've everybody's gotten very soft yeah. because everybody starts just rope pulls it used to be you sled drag with the rope yeah so you had to grip the rope arm straight sled drag, sled drag the parking lot which was 100 plus feet yeah yep. and then you turn the sled around and you come back and you start the rope pulls and Oh. Yeah, so rope pull was 35 meters back then. Yeah, yeah, it was miserably fun. Yeah. And so we did the rope pulls, then the overhead yoke carry where you kept poking up my trap. Um, and then harness. Yeah. Harness, and then I finished the harness, and you said, if you want to come back, we're going to do, um, you said, we're doing two laps around the parking lot. There's no walking and no stopping. No, no stopping. So that was my thing at the time. I love that one. Yeah. Uh, there was a parking lot. And so you had to take the sled and just sprint around it twice. And there's parts where it would slide well and parts where it just completely stuck to the ground. So you start here and you go around twice. And that spot right here at the end of the parking lot would go behind car. And this is where people would stop to rest, to rest. and to lie. <laughs> And, and that's the part was dragging too. And so that was my test is to see at that moment if people would go through 
or just keep on going. And that would tell me so much about people yeah. every time. And on the way back here, when you, there's a part where you drag and at that moment, you're going to, no matter who you are, it's walking speed. Yeah. And what I want to see though, if they keep trying to move their feet, because you don't understand, but at that moment, your legs are so down, you can barely move them. Yeah. So you're literally walking. But I want to see if you're trying to keep on sprinting or if you gave up and just walked. Because right. it's not, it doesn't look the same. And so that was actually a testing mechanism. And I told everybody, it's like, you can't walk, can't, uh, can't stop. If you stop, you're out. You're not coming back. Yeah. And that was death. Oh yeah, that one, that one hurts and so And I was bad. just laying there. Yeah. And I've learned because I'm, I'm mean as well. And so I was like, I'm not going to ask anything. I'm just <laughs> going to lay here comfortably and say, hey, maybe I'll see you next week. Do not week. say he's at it. Yeah. Um, and you just walked by and I didn't say anything. I was being very nice, minding my own business. And you're like, grab the 200 pound sandbag and go for a hundred meter, go down and back. And I was I like, a few minutes, but yeah. yeah, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And I was like, all right. And I could, I could walk 20 feet with that yeah. thing. I mean, I was dying. Cramping, yeah. It was so horrible, but I was like, I'm going to get it done. And then I walked back, dropped it off. You're like, all right, see you next week. And I was like, I got in my car and I think I just sat there for a bit. No, first I said, your last don't work. <laughs> That too, <laughs> but they do work. So it's it's your left flat then. doesn't yeah, work. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, left flat doesn't work and I'll see you next week. And yeah. I was like, fuck. And that was literally the plan moving forward. Your left flat doesn't work. Yeah. Like that's all I got. And I was like, fuck me. What am I, like at that point, I remember like I got in the car. I mean, I cursed you most of the way. Like but I remember leaving the parking lot and I was like, did I really just pay this much? to have this guy tell me my lats don't work, right? And so like there was an assurance to what you said, but at the same time, like, okay, well, he's working with Val. It seems like he knows that what he's talking about, but at that time in CrossFit and right. in the what, fitness world. What does world, this mean? Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't even that. It was everybody in the fitness space was doing all this fancy shit of mm -hmm. mashing, of bands, of micro movements, of... And you started to see kind of all this, mm -hmm. all this very complicated exercises coming about. And what you had me do was not. So part of me was like, this dude just took me for a ride yeah. and made me do shit that I could do at my house. Like it wasn't anything crazy yep. complicated. It was very Low simple. Yep. And my lats don't fucking work. And like, I mean, I've been told to have beautiful, like mm. I have, like the first thing that builds in my body is fucking yeah. lats. Like my lats and my quads will build so yeah. fast. I'm like, there's no, and well, my chest more than anything. Yeah. But I was like, how is it possible that my lats don't work? Like it just, I could not baffle because I could do the Yates rows. Not correctly. Right. Yeah. Now I know why, but. No, no, but at the time you also, because you also remember that the left side died on the rope pull yeah. and died on the wide yeah. to the world. And died on the overhead carry. Right. And so there was, there was that cognitive dissonance. It was like, but my left arm wasn't working. Right. Yeah. And is I that big, so is that the left flat? Yeah. The f no fucking way. Right. Well, yeah. especially yeah. me I mean, going so and uh, I can do uh, rope pulls. I can yeah. do everything. Yeah. So what do you mean it doesn't work? Yeah. And so that, like that, I stopped at the, at the gas station to get gas to go home. And then I puked in that part, in that parking lot. And I laid there and I contemplated that quite some time. And then I'm driving home. And I was like, I don't know if I did this. I don't know if this is the right move yeah, or not. This I was yeah. super excited that somebody gave me an answer that what needs to be worked on. So there was like this conflicting yeah. conversation totally. in my head. Um, and I remember getting closer to the house. And I was like, well, fuck it. And I'm a very much a fuck you guy. So if you challenge me to something, mm -hmm. I'll be like, fuck you. I'm going to show yeah. you. I may fail on my way through it. But I will show you that I'm going to give everything I can I'm going to, do to the work. it, right? Yeah, exactly. and, I, and, and I'm not going to give you the pleasure of me going, oh my God, it was so hard. Like, yeah. I'm not going to bitch about it. I'm just going to go fucking do it. And I may die, but you're going to know that I tried dying my mm -hmm. hardest. And um, I got home. I, well, I got to the gym because I had to go teach class. And I had like 45 minutes before class. I was like, fuck it. And I pulled out Arnie's Encyclopedia of, of Bodybuilding. And I just started looking at all his stuff about lats and back. And I went through four or five exercises that day. And my lat wasn't sore. Like I felt this and I was like, that's not right. So I sent you a message. I was yeah. like, I'm doing lat exercises, but I'm feeling my trap. I'm feeling my neck. I'm feeling my side delt. And so 
that was that was the start of me looking at exercise in a shift of perspective. Right, because you couldn't find it. Yeah. So every single lat exercise for that whole week before I went to go see you, and I would film it, and I would just start looking at how the body was moving. I'm like, I'm seeing something, but I don't know what. And one of the biggest things was this. Yeah. Like I would just roll, and I would do this, or my mid-back would do most of the pull. Mm -hmm. And I started to look at the arm kind of hiding behind the ribs, and I just started playing around and playing around and playing around, and I was like, at some point, if the lat is not cramping, I'm not using it. Right. And so... Well, especially since you were doing it every day and everything was sore, yeah. but the lat. Yeah. So then as soon as you start to go, okay, then something something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some, it's not working. Yeah. You know I mean? And so I think that's when I did the one arm landmine row. That's the one that got it right away. Right. But you went toward the obliques. That was a little bit later because it yeah. took a few weeks before you came before out with that, that one. one. Yeah. But I remember before is like uh, when you started getting sore in the lat, yeah. then you came to me and you said, but my shoulder hurts less. Yeah. I'm like, aha. We're going there. We're going yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Because I remember that was the stuff. It's like my lat starts to cramp, enfin, starts to be sore now, but my shoulder hurts less. I was like, all right. Because there was good days, bad days. Yeah. Days where the whole thing would go. Yeah. Neck, but some days where you go like, I press and I don't feel it. I'm like, that's and, and to need. me, I was like, that's the only thing that I care about is that you can train and how do you feel the next day? Right. Because to me, if we don't start performance there, then I don't know what performance is. Honestly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it was, we did, I think it was like six weeks where I pressed minimally with a barbell. Yep. So there was dumbbells. And I mean, I would go see you every week and we do the same thing. We would add in like a new exercise once a week because we started doing um, like super heavy, the frame shrugs. Yep. Um, we started doing the rope pulls. We were doing the seat press. We did the circus dumbbell. That was impressive. The sandbag presses. And we just kind of started going through trying to get... Well, I was rebuilding movement patterns on your left. Yeah. But unilaterally, mostly. Right. Yeah. Was, in a way, it was a very... Sim you can look back. It was a very simple stuff. It's just, you were so strong, so, so athletic. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to stress you, but correctly. If I let you do both ends, we screwed. Because yeah. I need 385. I'm right. like, yeah, but on one arm. Yeah. So I was like, all right, then let's not do that. So I was like, how am I going to target the left side without aggressively, but not too aggressively. And so that you can't compensate because then you, at the time you're like this, I'm like, that's, that's not going to go well. And yeah. so that's why every, everything was like strong and moving because it's like, then I can, it can be farmer's work is left versus right. So everything was like, all right, let's target the left, the left, the left, the left, the left. Again yeah. and again and again and again. Non-stop. But that's the thing is nothing was fancy because that's not what you needed. Right. Yeah. Then he would have just kept you into that mindset of like games and stuff like that. And I was like, and that's just heading into the wall, like just 100%. It. Yeah. So that, that shit would have just kept you going to the doctor every single week. Right. Yeah, I was six to eight weeks in and I was doing 255 by five on the strip. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you started was, at 220. Stuff. I was like, yeah. Yeah. mind blown. Yeah. It was, it was impressive. Um, so yeah, I mean that was that was most of the recovery, and then from there we just kind of maintenance. Well, we had to rebuild. After that, we started to go at the deadlift because it was still your left hip. Yeah. But then I understood that there was limits to the structure. So I was right. like, all right. So your left ab was a problem. Yeah. Because there's some movement, I was like, yeah, we're gonna stay away from them. Like once in a while, we do a movement, and that yeah, would go you bad. come back and you're like, that one hurt, but not in a good way, not yeah. like. Like in a way, I was like, oh, those one we have to stay away. So it was kind of playing around to see what you could do or not. Right. Yeah. We had fun with the harness and the drags and that. You did a lot All the of low west stuff. Fuck, we did. That was miserably fun. Like the, the sled <laughs> outside, there was a lot of session on this. Yeah. yeah. But that was, that, I mean, that was basically the recovery. It's, yep. you know, it, it's now understanding the principles that you've put out and watching you do so many assessments and, mm -hmm. you know, starting to do the assessments and, you start looking back on my recovery route and just the ups and downs. Cause yep. it, you know, we started with like the bigger muscles, but then at some point where we started to attack more of the rear delts. Yep. Uh, when Cause we were not catching up. Yeah. When we started doing the, the tour, you started putting me on the one arm uh, bench press yep. because I could not do the eccentric. Remember yep. there was yep. nothing. On right. That so we do side. the, it was, it was funny cause um, Rich loves to bench press. Right. And he's doing 95, Pounds, so 40 kilos on the right and could not do the empty barbell on the left. Yeah. Because I remember like the left was was going again. There was an atrophy there. 
uh, and we had many stuff in Australia. And I was like, oh, let's try to load the peg. And then it turned out the eccentric was nearly uh, impossible to do yeah. at first. Yeah. Just broken. Could not control the, the barbell just by itself. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think those are kind of the, the cooler moments and, and things that I reflect on a lot is on, on that recovery phase, like the, your approach, even now when I watch you do assessments, <laughs> it's such a simple, and I try to keep my assessments simple, but I, I think I've shifted my assessments to teach and have a, not a system, but at least some form of guidelines for coaches, because a lot of the mm -hmm. assessments that I've done are with people wanting yes, to learn exactly. how to do assessments. Exactly. And I think with you, it's even when we were doing coaches weeks, you'd always be like, if they don't get it, that's not my fault. <laughs> I'm like, yes, coach, but there needs to be yeah. a structure to it. And so, you know, if somebody has an issue squatting, you just put them on the squat and you just move yep. small things and you find what's not working and you make right. that going and, go still and that, going and going. For me, is yeah. that is what it, it's still the same form, format. Everything is what is it you cannot do? Yeah. What, I guess it's, um, you know, like it's, you know, like imagine if you're the only person not blind in the world of blind people, right? That's what scares me in life is what is, what sense do I lack that I cannot see the world as it is? Right. And so to me, it's always been that with an SMS. It's like, all right, then if something is going wrong, that means there's something you cannot do properly. All right, let's go find it. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's as far as, and then if I make you better at that, then everything goes up. It goes up, yeah. Yeah. That hasn't changed. That is still the way I look at it every time because that's the way I look at it for anxiety, for all the stuff. It's like, all right, what is it that is a fail? Right. Yeah. Let's go hunt. So, yes, as to teach to a coach, it's complicated. Yeah. It's <laughs> There's more, a lot of observing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you guys also have to understand, like, I would just show up at yeah. your gym. Yeah. He had would, none of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I had no shame in my game. I would be like, I would show up and I would just... He would press, that was so funny. He would show up, he would put his phone, press record, yeah. and then that was it. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and I would just watch. And yeah, just exactly. And, and just, uh, yeah. And so every time he's like, do you mind if I put my phone there? I was like, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. And it was just nonstop. And no, but what people don't understand is what you went through. Because you, I was not... To me, it was like knowledge is stolen. Yeah. So he's like, you want to learn? Sure. Watch me do it and figure it out. Right. Like he had... No, there was no... He had no matrix, no nothing. No, I mean, there was, was no a pyramids. few pyramids. No, but that didn't come to a barbell shrug. Yeah, which is a year later. Yeah. So yeah, he had none of it. It was Zero. nothing. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> he had to get everything the hard way. Yeah. 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 Because barbell show is like, okay, I should probably start to put it in the system. Yeah. So everything right. else was but, just yeah. watching. Yeah. Watch, watch, watch. But for me, it was simple. Is it what is it you cannot do? Right. Which I get, I get why business wise it's a bad idea. First of all, right. on a client, because it's not good for your ego. Because yeah. I'm going to make you do the stuff you suck at all no, day. Stop. Yeah. And second of all, like, it's too simple and not, just not fancy enough. Right. It's not shiny. Yeah. It's not shiny. It's not fancy, but neither is truth. So no, but I think, it, and, and I, I think the, the glory in that, though, is that it's, it's almost so simple. And they're like, that's all it is. And you're like, that's all it is. You, you know what the glory to... is in that? The glory is that it's you. Yeah. It's not me. Right. I'm not selling you a solution to a problem you don't have. Right. Which yeah. is what we see today. It's <laughs> like, I have a solution. Whether or not it applies to you is not the problem. Is right. I have a solution. Yeah. But it's not my problem. No, no, no. I have a solution. <laughs> that's the conversation. Is it doesn't matter whether it fits or not. It's, it's... Let me tell you my solution. And for me, I was like, no, 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 no. You have a problem. No. That's the way I looked at it. It was just that. It was like, all right, what is it you cannot do? There's the problem. Well, let's, let's, let's go, go do that it. then. Right. It does require fortitude, I guess. Right. You would put it. Yeah. The willingness. But look, which is what kills me is how few of you have found, if any, where right. I was like the left flat. Well, let me go train the left flat. Yeah. And then I'll come <laughs> back so I'm like, ha. <laughs> But, but me, by the way, so I feel my trap a lot. I'm like, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. And yeah. where people are like, well, uh, what do you mean by the left flat? Right. You know, like that thing there. It's like, well, how do you want? Exactly. It's how? like, well, what exercise? Well, but that's my point. Find <laughs> your left flat. There's no exercise that per se that will make you find your left flat if you use your trap. Like, yeah. I don't, there's no 
magic pill here. It's the same thing we see with the anxiety. It's like it's not the workout. It's whether you do it as an AMRAP or as an imam. Right. That will give you anxiety. But the workout itself doesn't, doesn't do, matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It's byproducts. your approach to it. Yes, yeah. it's your approach to it. So it was like, no, 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 no. find your lat. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. It's Fine. Find lot. Your lot. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> the words I use. Am I speaking English right now? Am I speaking no, French? No like, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Am I speaking French again? Um, it was that. And, but yeah, that's what I've tried to communicate to coaches. But I get it. In today's society, it's not a, uh, it's not a good selling point. But right. um, for me, any other approach would have destroyed you. Yeah. You would have become obsessive with you know, numbers and this and the stuff and just go run into the oh, wall. Straight, straight and I was like, it, yeah. all right, like, no. Like, I, I could tell right away. It's like, let me show you what you cannot do because I knew also you would, uh, I could tell you would work on it. But man, do I miss that quality in the people that I see. Right. You know, like, sometimes I show them, like, this is what you, but you cannot need, yeah. do, not doing, whatever. It's yeah. not a judgment on my part. It's, that part is not happening. And right. it's, Almost that look at you going like, you know, how dare you? Or like, I don't want to well, know about in, that. In I this was like, day and oh. age, it's judgmental coach. It is. <laughs> it is. It's negative. Yes. Well, <laughs> it is. But it's also what the issue is. Right. This is what I found is that at the end, it's most of the time you already know the answer. It's just my job is just to put it in front of you that you cannot do this. Right. Yeah. And then the conversation starts. But. Got to find the gaps first. But that was that. Like, it was just, look, your left arm is not pressing. Let's make it press. Right. That sounds overly simplistic, but how many times do you see that problem? It's just Non-stop. press with your left. Yes, it might not be fixed in one session, and it wasn't. Right. But I don't think anything could be fixed in one session. I mean, it's Ever. just... It's... That's what kills me in today's. Yeah. Like, is it... So, I think social media has changed the world, therefore, the fitness industry in the last four years, because... You know, like it's, it's going like this and like this and like this. And now they all want like, yeah, okay, but how do we apply it? I'm like, no, no, no. You have to earn it first. Like yeah. it doesn't work like that. And so I think we're going to be one of the few or one, one of the last to teach it like that. Right. It's like, no, well, it has to be earned. Earned, yeah. not given. We used to say it all the time at the yeah. beginning. It's like the shit takes, takes time, time and work. Like you guys don't understand how long it takes me to come up with everything, like the number of studies I have to read, the amount of work, like to do a 10-minute podcast on hours, like I have to think about it for two hours and I have to read this and I have to, right. like it's just, I mean, like it's, maybe people are too distracted, but. Uh, I think that everybody's just gotten so used to everything's handed here. Yeah, maybe like, it's just it, too it, soft. It's the, it's, it's just the service, right? Yeah. So you pay for yes. it and I get it. And that's, Exa- that's, that's what I exactly. want. Exactly. And it's, ex- yeah. no, you pay for it. And I give you a riddle and you have to go figure out that riddle right. when you go home. I think that's a very good point. I think that would be the best way to describe all this is that when people come to see us for assessment, they need to understand what they're buying. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, and I've made it very clear with, not, I, I feel like it's taken me this long, but I have my voice very clear mm-hmm. now as to what I do. And so, yeah, you come to see me for a session, but then there's going to be a month or two month gap and then I need you to come back or we keep working together for the next month. But you coming to see me doesn't fix you. Then you are not coming to see me for a solution. You right. are coming to see me to identify the problem. Right. Yeah. Because solution, guess what? <laughs> Good news for you is you're going to have to go find it. Yeah. And it's in dark waters and, you know, that's the, but no, first we identify the problem. the problem. That's what you're coming to see me for with the assessment. After yeah. that, we can start working, but at the end, you'll do the work anyway. But for me, it was, it was very important to establish, and I still, this, to this day, this is, is you come to me to identify the problem. That's it. That's it. Everybody else, they're just selling you some, selling you some shit. Okay. And because they're selling you a solution that is, that is not necessarily fitting your problem. Right. Most coaches out there now have one area. That means they have one solution. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it's your problem. Maybe yeah. it's not. And if it's not, well, they'll sell you the solution yeah. anyway. Yeah, so, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so for me, and, and plus on top of it, I saw you as a coach. And, and I was like, he can use it. But you can't use it if you don't understand it. Like, And when I mean understand, I mean like, oh, is right. that how? Oh, interesting. Yeah. We see that when we travel. Like the, uh-huh. And CrossFit has evolved into something else again now. 
into yeah. almost a global, global gym type. Because like, the, the new people don't even know, you, they don't even know who Greg Glassman is. Well, no, because he's out. Who's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but even two years ago, they still didn't know who they that guy who was, was, which yeah. I found it. So now it's just a methodology. Yeah. Which, oh, it was so much more. That's a certification process. It was so That's much it. more. Yeah. yeah. Just that. And so you could tell, like, the approach of coaches is offering a solution, not identifying a problem, problem, just offering a solution. Whether the solution fits your problem or not is not their issue. Right. They have a solution to offer, and that's what you're buying. Is that what you want to buy? Not, yeah. not what I would want <laughs> to buy. And, and not so, what we're offering. <laughs> no, not what we're offering because, and that's what, that was interesting that like the PBL, you know, problem-based learning, is the step number one was uh, identify the problem. That's adult learning. You cannot learn in any other format than this. Otherwise, right. you're lacking uh, the neuroscience one on. But when you talk about neuroplasticity, that's what they talk about, is um, you know, arousal versus focus. You cannot learn any other way. Right. You have to identify a problem first. Kids don't need that. Adults do. Right. So that means that coaching, because we mostly coach adults, have to, to be through identifying a problem first. And that's what mostly what we've been doing. Yeah. Constantly. So it's, it's still nothing has changed. We better at it, more precise. Yeah. But the principles are not changed. Right. And those sessions yeah. are still fun, by the way. It's funny, like they still my yeah. no matter what, I still <laughs> what I go to. It's still a fucking clean and press on the sandbag. Yeah. It's always it's, good. This overhead you carry. It's a rope pulls. Yeah. I think the only thing I've added in all the list is the sled press. The sled which press. is a good exercise. Yeah. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, folks. Is that yeah. funny? Like we still treat people with the same six exercises nothing has yeah. changed and it's funny people will come for my assessments and we're doing a same back like i already do those i was it's, like well let's see yeah <laughs> <laughs> have you been doing those or you've been doing your version of those have you really been, been doing been those yeah. <laughs> is that really what you're doing like let's see because i'm pretty yeah. sure you haven't and so, they go like oh and like yeah how to keep it simple which is another issue altogether yeah is we see that uh, more and more, like people that like, come to us going like, I do all this, but first of all, then why yeah. do you come here? Yeah. And second of all, I'm pretty sure, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. <laughs> because when I make you do it, well, it I just did a, a clinic yeah. and we we're doing sandbag carries and the guy comes back and says, my, my back's blown up. And I was like, well, do another one and find how to not make your back blow up. Yeah. And he comes back, my back's blowing up. Did you change anything? I don't think so. Well, of course your back's going to blow up again. It blew up the That's first time. That's what happened time. the first time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why, if you're not Definition gonna... <laughs> of insanity, yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, more than likely it's going to blow up more now because you're doing it. Do it again and it's going to blow up again. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can make that prediction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I was like, well, why don't we try changing something? And they look at you like, what would I change? Yeah, because my back blew up. Yeah. Just I'm like, well, exactly. how about the way right. you're walking, the way you're breathing, the yes. way you're holding I, I it? Like, like, I like when they say, what do you mean? I was like, you know what you've been doing? Yeah, not that. Yeah. Just try something so different. Something else than that. Huh. I'm There's, like, for example, novelty yeah, search people. But, but uh, that's a, I think that's just the position driven yeah. task, is it, objective. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, is it because people don't care enough? Is it that, you know, like today's society of like the server stuff where you get it and Maybe there's a lack of care now in, on how people are supposed to do stuff or lack of a exploration. Lack of, a lack of boredom, therefore, there's a lack of creativity. Because you're always la distracted. lack of boredom. Yeah, exactly. You can't. And, and that was just because of Leon. I'm looking and I'm like, your kid needs to be bored. Like he yeah. needs to be punished and sit in that corner yeah. because that boredom drives creativity. Yeah. So you to, if you're constantly on screens and you're never, yeah. you're bored, but you're not bored. You're still being active, but your mind's not actually generating anything. Yeah, so and you so don't, even yeah, you when, won't try anything. Yeah, like when I was, I'm, like I see people and, and their morning routines are to immediately start reading. Mm. And I'm like, why don't you just sit there? Like my morning routine is I Can come you? up here and I yeah. sit in there and I look out the window and I just let my mind wander. That was no fix November for me. Yeah. It was the first 20 minutes just sitting just there, like looking at the, even like just looking straight at them. Yeah. Hmm. So I think it's a lack of boredom that yeah. leads to a lack of creativity. And, and they just... Distracted continuously. And yep. now there's no, I mean, mo all of my CrossFit was done by me. I mean, I didn't really have coaches. Yep. And so I had to be very creative as to learning how to clean and how to be more efficient. You watch some videos to get some notes, but for the most then part, you, it's just, you experiment and you yep. try in all sorts of different ways. And now I think it's evolved to a place where the guidebook for, the, for yep. CrossFit or for the NASM, you know, not just CrossFit, they have such a strict 
objective and method that is delivered that nobody skews from it. Yeah, and they all seem also scared of trying anything, anything outside that, of it. Yeah. That's what strikes me the most me is that either clients or coaches, they're so scared of trying anything. Yeah. Even when we say something, they apply to the letter. And I was like, but I never say anything to the letter. Right. So how could you apply to yeah. the letter? Yeah. I did not give you a letter. Right. I did, yeah. Which, by the way, we don't have any sort of strong fit class, class guys. By definition. These are principles. Yeah. We don't have a class. We don't. Yeah. If you're going to a strong fit class at your gym, uh, people I would need ask... to learn more about strong fit to understand that there is no strong fit class. Right. We have never uh, certified someone to do a certain a strong fit class. So if you see it at your gym, just know it's not from us. Yeah. It's the owner um, powered by strong fit. I don't mind. Right? Yeah. At, let, ask the owner if at least he's done the seminar or something. Yeah. And if he hasn't, then he's definitely not from us. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You, you're not doing strong fit. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho, that took a sideways view, but that was good. Yeah. No, but that was good. It was the, that was the point is how did needed. we address it? Yeah. yeah. The same way we address you guys. Yep. Find, Find a, problem. a problem. Cool. Have a good one, guys. Follow us. Give us five stars on iTunes, on Spotify. Can you rate people on Spotify? No, right? Oh, no you idea. can like it. You can save it. Subscribe and comment on everything. Share yeah. the shit out of it. Enjoy it. Cool. Let's do that. Have a good one, guys.